Hello everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode in the story of the MiG-1500. Now, as you may or may not know, this is now booting from the SCSI hard drive, which is on the GVP uh, HC2. I'm not sure if it's Series 1 or it's Series 2. I think it's a Series sort of one and a half type uh, SCSI card. Now the issues I had before were simply that JP4 wasn't uh, jumpered or closed on the card so the auto boot was disabled. Now if you run the um, GVP software disk that comes with it originally, the installation disk, it comes up as it boots into Workbench 1.3 whatever it is. It comes up uh, non auto boot or no auto boot or something like that now when I boot that uh, driver disk and reset the Amiga it comes up auto boot so it knows and I know because the, the hard drive boots obviously so one of what, what I wanted to look at briefly in this was uh, why GVP is different to Commodore's own SCSI and basically how to set it up so GV, GV, GVP are, or were, great value products and I think they're still running, or were, under the moniker GVPM. Uh, they disappeared in the late 90s and reappeared in 2000 and something. Um, I think they're a new company. But anyway, GVP made accelerators, um, all kinds of cards for the Amiga. And they were, they were probably the biggest third party um, I'll just zoom in here third party uh, developer for the Amiga anyway so what are we going to do well what we'll do first off is just briefly show you what the differences are well, I'll pop the Workbench 2 install disk in now what happens is, if you run uh, the normal install disk from Workbench, it will come up eventually. This is a disk I've made, so ignore, ignore this. If you run the normal disk, what you'll see is this, more or less. And what will happen is, when you run it on a GVP device, it will come up no disk found, no hardware found, whatever it says. Now, as you can see on mine, it finds the hard drive. The reason for this is, quite simply, this is difficult to drive and it's balancing on your knee. Um, come on, information. As you can see, SCSI underscore device underscore name equals GVP SCSI dot device. And what will that, that what that will do is it will load the SCSI driver from the card, from the ROM, uh, before it searches for whatever hard drive is connected. If you just run that normally from the workbench disk, that won't be in. The GVP SCSI won't be in. It may have uh, device equals SCSI.device, but not a GVP SCSI.device. And if you alter it to GVP, it finds the hard drive. So this is Commodore's uh, 2.1. This is HD Inst Tools, which is a later version of the same thing. But it's preferable, really. You've got much more control. Right, in this one, as you can see, device equals GVP SCSI dot device. The rest of it's not terribly important. Mode manual might help you. But. So if I click that, or double click, eventually, when the disk spins, there you go. Quantum hard drive, LUN0 ID1. So if I click setup drive, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It fills most of the well, it fills all the information for me. I'm not going to alter anything because I've just copied um, uh, the system files over. 
I can add uh, a later file system if I wish I haven't done, it's just FFS, which is a standard Commodore. I can edit the partitions, it's only a 39 megabyte drive so I haven't bothered. Delete, partition, and all that good stuff. If I had a large hard drive, say many gigabytes, if um, the EVP will detect that, I'm not sure. As you can see, I've just done this before I turn the camera on. Version GVP SCSI device will tell you what. There you go. What SCSI um, is getting from the card, or what SCSI is loaded anyway. Now, if you booted this in standard Workbench and ran that, it will come up. Uh, no module or nothing found or something. If you put a SCSI card in there by GVP and run it, it should come up with GVP SCSI and whatever version of software uh, ROM it's gone in there. I have just upgraded this card from uh, version 1 ROMs to version 3.15. I took the ROMs out and uh, erased them and copied um, or burnt version 3.15 from um, what's his name's website? I'll put a link on, I can't remember his name now. Ralph, 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 Ralph. Ralph Barble Babel, whatever his name is. Um, and I think he actually wrote some of the software or work for GVP anyway, back in the day. And he's still doing stuff now. Um, so really that is all I wanted to say. But if you have a GVP card uh, and you run the installation software, it will come up no hardware found or no destroy no hard drive found whatever it says and that is why simply because you have to go into information and alter it to gvp scuzzy dot device if you don't um, it will never find the hard drive it's difficult to do any you, you must have device gvp scuzzy dot device in the um, what you do is you click new, type in, and then save, and it'll add it to this um, configuration. I'm not going to do that. But HD is tools you can get from Aminet. Uh, HD tools is Commodore's own, and that is included in Workbench 2 and Workbench 3 and Workbench 3.1. Uh, if you're using Commodore's own, it's written slightly different. There we go, SCSI device name. Has to be underscored in between. But effectively it does exactly the same thing. It might say locale and various other things on there. This is one I've altered. So I'll be buggy if I can remember what it said. The SCSI device is simply where I dropped uh, 3.15 and put it on the disk. What I mean by that is, come on, oh you can do it, you can do it, come on, come on, come on, no, oh, that one. Um, what I did was I dropped the SCSI drive because my card kept coming up non-auto boot when I put the GVP install disk in. Uh, so what I did is I copied that into, what did I copy into? Expansion. There you go, it's empty at the moment. I copied that SCSI device into there and when I booted this disk it did find it, I could set the hard drive up but when I took the disk out and rebooted it would never boot the drive because it, it wasn't set to auto boot. So jumper 4, if you've got a HC2, not an HC8 which is a common one, this is an earlier card. There are earlier ones, HC which had no RAM on it but HC2 has 2 megabytes of RAM, HC8 can have 8 megabytes of RAM. But anyway, that's how you set a hard drive up on a GVP card anyway. They're all the same, regardless of it's an A500, an A3000, not an A3000, A4000, A3000 has got billions of it. So you must have that line in there. It would normally say device equals SCSI dot device and that would boot from a Commodore card 
Uh, I'm not sure if it boot from an Octagon card. It might do, might not. I can't remember now. It's been a few years since I've had them. But generally speaking, it will not say GVP. And it must do for you to boot GVP's own SCSI device. And that is it. So if you can't find your hard drive, that may be why. That's not to say your SCSI hard drive is any good, because after all these years it's probably knackered anyway, as most of them are. Uh, what, what? Right. So, that very quickly, and in a nutshell, I was going to reformat the drive and various other stuff, but I, don't, I can't be bothered. Really? Everybody knows how to do that. Um, yeah, so that's it really. It's just how to set up the GVP, because I forget. Because what generally happens is I'll have a GVP card, I'll use it in whatever machine I've got it in. A year or so later, six months later, I'll sell the machine. I won't have a GVP device then for a year or two, get another one. And then I'll sit about scratching my head thinking, why won't this work? And that's why. So that is how to find your hard drive on a GVP card. And they're 50 pin SCSI by the way. Unless you use an adapter for something else. But that's it. Thank you very much.